We begin with meteorologist Elisa Raffa live in Charleston tonight. Elisa, you're already seeing some major flooding there. Yeah, that's something that I've been watching closely all day since this morning, and it's because we had a high tide coming in at the same time as the storm surge. And what was so unique about this high tide is we have this beautiful full moon out there tonight. That makes the high tide a king tide, essentially saying it's even higher than what a regular high tide would be. That time to come in the same time as the storm surge, and we were worried about that, and our worries came through, through fruition. You're looking at video from the battery in Charleston, where it broke records for a tide this evening. That ocean water came in so far. Flood stage in that area for the Charleston Harbor is seven feet. Well, we peaked at 9.23 feet, which makes it the fifth highest peak on record for the Charleston Harbor. So an incredibly high uh, tide, again, even for that area. The records go back to 1921. So we had the, again, where you're looking at us, that ocean water that's coming in uh, on the railing, I was able to see the ocean water just kind of smacking along the railing kind of ferociously as it came in again with the high tide and the storm surge. Um, that area is not too far from the College of Charleston, so a lot of students were kind of walking around and, you know, trying to see what was going on. And, and you know, and I asked them, does this happen often? And the Battery area does flood often, right? The ocean's right there. It's a low-lying city. You know, the water, Charleston floods, right? We know that. But a lot of the students say that uh, the last couple of hurricanes that they've been through in the Charleston area, they haven't seen flooding like that. So, again, we do know that it broke record books. Fifth highest uh, peak of, of tide there for the Charleston Harbor. And we'll have to wait to see how long it takes for that to recede going into tomorrow morning. We'll probably go uh, check it out there. Elise, a couple questions for you. One, first, can you tell us where are you in the downtown area? I know Charleston pretty well. It looks like you're in the French Quarter, but I can't really tell. And then also, I'm noticing from your live shot that you're seeing lights that are on around you. So that's kind of a good news. I checked with Dominion Energy. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of power outages in the area. Talk to us about why that is with such a powerful storm. Yeah, so the power outage uh, question is interesting. The power outages, um, you know, there, there are some out there, but they're not as widespread and as many because for us, this wasn't a wind maker, right? This was always about water. This was a water maker. We were always worried about the heavy rain and the storm surge and the tide coming in at the coast. So uh, that doesn't do as much when it comes to um, some of the power outages as much as wind would do. Um, I do know that there are some, I've seen some action on Twitter, some demeaning. Um, workers that are working on some power outages around here because what I can tell you, our partners at our Charleston sister station here are reporting that Folly Beach is cut off. There's so much flooding and debris um, that to go from downtown Charleston to Folly Beach, you cannot. So they're working on trying to get those uh, areas open back up and get power back on for anyone who is flooded and doesn't have that power right now. But yeah, cut off to some of those beaches, Adesto Beach too, I believe.